Why Does the Moon Change Shape? by Melissa Stewart. Essential question. How do you explain what you see in the sky? Read about the different phases of the moon. The Mysterious Moon. For as long as people have lived on Earth, they have asked questions about the bright lights that fill the nighttime sky. What causes them? How far away are they? Why do they move from night to night? For thousands of years, the moon has been the most mysterious nighttime object of all. It is the largest object in the night sky, and it is the brightest. What amazed ancient people the most is how the moon's shape is constantly changing. Sometimes it looks like a full bright circle. Other times, only a tiny sliver appears. It did not take ancient people long to realize that the moon's changes or phases follow a regular pattern. The moon's phases repeat themselves every 29 or 30 days. If you watch the moon every night for a month, you can see all of its phases. At the beginning of each cycle, people on earth cannot see the moon at all. After a few days, a tiny sliver of light appears in the nighttime sky. Each night, the moon looks a little larger. After a week, it looks like half of a circle. And about a week after that, a full round disk brightens the night sky. But then the moon starts to shrink. Each night it gets a bit smaller. After about a week, the moon looks like half of a circle. And a week after that, the moon disappears completely. But a few days later, a tiny sil sliver of light returns. This series of photos shows what the moon looks like during each night of its cycle. You can see one half of the moon lit up on day 7, a full moon on day 14, and the other half of the moon lit up on day 21. Our place in space. Earth is one of the eight planets in our solar system. The other planets are Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. All eight planets orbit or move around a star called the Sun. A year is the amount of time it takes a planet to circle the Sun once. Earth completes the trip in about 365 days, so an Earth year is 365 days long. That is the amount of time between your last birthday and your next birthday. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun. It makes one full orbit in just 88 days, so a year on Mercury is much shorter than a year on Earth. Neptune is the farthest planet from the Sun. It takes Neptune 165 Earth years to circle the Sun. That is a really long time to wait between birthdays. Here in this picture you will see asteroids, which are small rocky objects that orbit the Sun. Planets are not the only objects that orbit the Sun. Thousands of smaller rocky chunks called asteroids and dwarf planets do too. Most asteroids follow paths located between Mars and Jupiter. Dwarf planets such as Pluto are larger than asteroids. Their orbits are located beyond Neptune. Comets are small icy objects that orbit the Sun. Their orbital paths around the Sun are long and thin, like a cucumber. Planets, asteroids, and dwarf planets and comets do not fly off into space because the Sun's gravity is always tugging on these smaller objects. Their forward movement is perfectly balanced with the pull of the Sun's gravity. In this image of Earth and the Moon, you can see part of the far side of the Moon the half of the moon that never faces Earth. The moon in motion. The sun is not the only object in our solar system with enough gravitational pull to attract smaller bodies. Six planets, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune have smaller objects orbiting them. So do a few asteroids and dwarf planets. These smaller objects are moons. Scientists have identified at least 60 moons circling Jupiter. Saturn probably has even more but Mars has just two moons and Earth has only one. This picture on the bottom shows a total of six Apollo spacecraft carried people to the moon. The astronauts returned with photos, rock samples, and amazing stories of what they saw as they cruised around in their lunar rovers. The Earth's moon is closer to Earth than any other object in space. Still, it took Apollo astronauts traveling at rocket speed about four days to reach the moon in the late 1960s and early 1970s. The moon is about 238,860 miles from Earth. That is almost 100 times farther than the distance between New York, New York, and Los Angeles, California. 
It takes the moon about 27 days to complete one full orbit around the Earth. That means it circles our planet about 12 times each year. As the moon orbits Earth, it also rotates or spins like a top. Earth rotates too. Our planet takes about 24 hours or one full day to complete one rotation. The moon spins much more slowly. It rotates just once during each 27 day orbit. As the Earth spins, different areas of the planet face the sun. It is daytime in the places that are facing the sun. That is why days are bright and sunny. It is nighttime on the part of the Earth facing away from the sun. That is why it is dark at night. The amount of time it takes the moon to rotate is the same as the time the moon takes to orbit the Earth. So people on Earth always see the same side of the moon. Scientists call the side we see the near side. When the near side of the moon is lit up by the sun, we see a full bright circle. When the far side of the moon is fully lit up by the sun, we cannot see the moon at all. This picture shows an x-ray image of the sun, which shows some of the fiery gases it sends out into space. Let there be light. The sun is a star, a giant ball of boiling gases. The temperature at the center of the sun is 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. The gases inside the sun are so hot that it glows. The sun is not the biggest star in the universe, but it looks the brightest in the sky to us because it is the closest. During some parts of the year, we can see Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn as bright, steadily shining dots of light in the night sky. But these planets do not produce their own light. The light we see when we look at them comes from the sun. As the sun's rays hit a planet, some of the light bounces off the planet's surfaces and travels back into space. When some of that reflected light reaches our eyes, the planet seems to glow. The moon reflects the sun's light too. We know from astronauts and space vehicles visiting the moon that it is made of solid rock. There is no source of light on the moon. We can only see the moon when the sun is shining on it, and then that light is reflected off the moon's surface and into our eyes. The moon is much smaller than Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, but it looks bigger and brighter to us because it is much closer to Earth than those planets are. Here is some, a great time to stop and check and answer some questions. How are we able to see planets and moons when they do not produce their own light? You can go back into the text to find the answer. In this picture, the moon's light comes from the sun. It looks different to us on the different days because the moon and earth are always moving. Why does the moon change shape? During any 29 or 30 day period, the moon's appearance seems to gradually change and then return to its original shape. But the moon is not really changing at all. What you are seeing is the moon being lit up by the sun's rays in different ways on different days. What causes these differences? Changes in the positions of the moon and earth. This picture shows a crescent moon which appeared five days after the new moon. In the first phase of the moon called the new moon, the giant ball of rock is not visible on earth at all. That is because the moon is in between the sun and the earth. The far side of the moon is being lit up by the sun but the near side is not. As the moon orbits our planet, more and more of the near side is lit up by the sun's rays. After a few days, you can see a C-shaped sliver called the crescent moon. Some people think this phase of the moon is shaped like a crescent roll. Close to one week after you see the new moon, the sun lights up about half of the near side of the moon. This phase is called the first quarter moon because the moon is now one quarter or 25% of the way through its full cycle. A few days later, the moon will have traveled far enough in its orbit for you to see a shape that has curved humps on both sides. This phase is called the gibbous moon because gibbous is the Latin word for humped. Around two weeks after you see the new moon, the sun shines directly on the near side of the moon. The entire full moon is lit up. In this picture at the bottom, the stunning full moon appeared over gigantic rock formations called the Buttes in Monument Valley, which is located in Utah and Arizona. As the moon continues to orbit around the Earth, the moon begins to disappear. After a few days, you will see another gibbous moon in the sky. Close to three weeks after you saw the new moon, the sun lights up only about half of the near side of the moon. This phase is called the last quarter moon because the moon is now just one quarter or 25% away from completing its full cycle. 
A few days later, all but a tiny sliver of the crescent moon will have disappeared. Most of the sun's rays are now falling on the far side of the moon. In just a few more days, the moon will disappear completely. The moon has returned to its original position in its orbital path. The far side of the moon is fully lit up by the sun, but the near side is in complete darkness. The moon has cycled through its phases for years, and it will continue to do so as long as our planet and its mysterious moon exist. About the author, Melissa Stewart believes in the power of nature. She thinks that every part of nature has a story to tell, and Melissa is listening. Melissa fell in love with nature as a child while walking through the woods with her father. Today, she writes science books about what she loves. Melissa enjoys writing children's books because kids are so curious. Some of her best books have grown out of her own wonderings. When Melissa isn't writing, she likes to be outside. She also speaks about science at schools and she teaches writing courses. Melissa has advice for kids everywhere. Go out and explore.